It is a beautiful rainy day, perfect for sharing with you how I painted the sunset painting. I used oil paints for this painting, but you can also follow along with these techniques in acrylics, though the end result will probably be a little different. I would also like to mention that oil paints can be used in so many different ways, and I'm just going to be sharing with you one way. There isn't a right or wrong, this is just how I do it. So with that being said, whether you're painting along or just watching for fun, I hope that you enjoy. I'm starting the painting off by toning the canvas with a neutral color. The color I'm using is burnt umber diluted with some gamzol, which is the solvent I'm using. Toning the canvas creates a midi ground for you to lay down your colors on. A white canvas is just highlights, but a neutral surface, if you start with that, you're able to put in your highlights instead of just your shadows. Then I'm going directly on the wet layer of paint and mapping out my basic shapes and creating a rough underpainting. I'm looking at my reference image and looking at the main shapes in it. For example, the horizon line, I'm mapping that out, and the logs beside the beach. The reference image for this painting comes from a photo my dad took in Vancouver a few years ago. I love the colors in it and that's really what inspired this painting. As you can see, I'm keeping the underpainting fairly rough. I'm not worrying too much about the details. The point of it is just to know where the basic shapes are going to go, not so much of the detail. We can worry about that a little bit later on. Now we can get started on mixing our colors. I'm mixing some alizarin crimson with some ultramarine blue and titanium white. I'm also adding in some cadmium red light to make my color a little bit more less saturated. I'm taking that same mix of color, adding in a little bit more ultramarine blue and cadmium red light and mixing those together. I'm looking at my reference image and paying attention to the different colors of the different shades of purple in the sunset. Typically in nature, the same color isn't always just one color. You have different variations of the same color blending together. Again, mixing some titanium white, creating a lighter version. Now I have four different versions of the color purple. And that is really what will give different, will add interest to our painting. Since the layer of my underpainting was very thin and diluted, it dried very quickly. And now I can start working on my sky. In a painting where the sunset has a lot of colors and there's a body of water reflecting that color, it's always a good idea to start with the sky first. It can help your mind look at the painting in a way that makes more sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm paying attention to my reference image and matching my values with my reference image. So the values are what is dark and what is light, the shadows and the highlights. In a 2D image, that's what give it the realistic feel, is the values. It's the shadows and the highlights that are doing the trick on our, the viewer's mind. My brush strokes are in the direction of the clouds. That way you can give an impressionistic, painterly feel. I'm using a mop brush to blend everything. A mop brush is very helpful when trying to achieve smooth blending. The medium I'm using is Galkid mixed with 50% Gamzol. I always like doing this much, uh, I always like mixing my medium with some Gamzol for the first layers and then as the layers progress and it's time for more glazing, I will use just Gamzol. Sorry, just Galkid.
again as you will see me do throughout this whole painting just adding the dark shadows wherever I see them in the reference image it's not going to be perfect the first time and never really is you have to keep going back to it and keep reworking it Now we can get started on mixing the yellow and orange part of the sunset. So I'm taking some cadmium yellow light and some cadmium red light and titanium white and mix them, those two colors together, different amounts of each color to create different shades of them. So it's just the same two colors, but the amount I'm using in each batch is what makes the color a little bit different. So again, looking at my photograph, I'm starting from the center and adding the more darker orange color. And working my way out from the center. Now the colors that I mixed, I'm not just strictly sticking to them, I'm also mixing my colors together with some of those purple batches to reach more in-between tones. You don't have to be super strict about how, how you can only use those colors as of themselves. Mixing them together with each other is also a great idea to achieve even more mid-tones. So blending it in with the purple. I'm leaving the sun there white so I can have it pretty crisp and white because whenever we're looking at a light source that's really bright, it's always really white from there and around it is more the intense color. So whenever photos of the sun are taken, it's typically very white white from the center. Since we're working in layers, we don't have to worry too much about getting everything perfect the first time. We can wait for a little, little bit and go over it again. And the point right now is to get the basic colors down. If it doesn't look exactly like the photograph right now, that's not a big deal. Taking some titanium white straight out of the tube and refining the sun and creating the light rays around it. Then using the mop brush to soften it out a little bit. This way we're creating that illusion of that's so bright that even the camera wasn't able to capture. Now I'm taking the same colors as I had before and glazing it on. So now I'm mixing it with more uh, just Galkid, not the 50% mixture, and glazing the color on. Though my layers down aren't dry yet, I just went straight on with the glazing, it gives it a really cool effect by doing that. So you can let it dry and then go over it, or you can do what I did, but both times you'll get a slightly different result. This adds the interest in the photo, in the in the painting it gives it the look of clouds because clouds are typically very layered
I am blending it a lot, but I'm also making sure not to over blend because it's very easy to muddy up your colors when working with oil paints. So what I'll do often is I will use my mop brush and then wipe it off on a paper towel. So blend it, but don't over blend it. Let some of the brush strokes show. Now using those exact same colors I mixed earlier, I am putting them down in the area that the water is. So since the water is reflecting the colors of the sky, I can just use the exact same colors and just blend them right in. Now this part is very important to pay attention to the reference and really watch how the light reflects off of the water. I'm smoothly blending all the colors together and using my mop brush. So I realized that my water had a lot more yellow and orange in it than my sky really did. So I'm taking those exact same colors and mixing it with them with some Galkid and glazing them on top again. What this does is it gives them a really layered and majestic look. It also creates, solidifies that illusion of light from the light source, which is the sun. This layering and working back and forth is part of what gives, which can help, is part of what can help you achieve that realistic look. Just refining the clouds there a little bit more.
Okay, so now that I have my sky and water how I would like them to be, I can now start working on the sand and logs portion of the painting. So I'm taking some of that purple uh, that I mixed earlier with my Orzin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Cadmium Red Light, and adding a little bit of Burnt Umber to that. What that does is, it, is that it mutes that purple a little bit more and creates a more brownish purple. The reason why we want our sand to have a purplish color is so that it looks like the, s the colors up from the sky are reflecting off the sand as well, making it appear a little bit more muted purple. Now I'm blocking in the logs and I'm using burnt umber for that and mixed with some yellow ochre. Right now I'm just blocking them in, I'm not worrying too much about detail or anything. The point of it is to just get to just establish the basic tones and values and the shapes. Now I'm adding in some more detail to the logs. Again with my burnt umber and yellow ochre, different shades of them mixed with titanium white. In the back there, closer to the horizon line, you can see that I just gave the impression of logs rather than painting them on. Oftentimes in painting, you can just give the impression of something being there without it actually being there. Again, adding some shadows between the logs, so the shadows don't, uh, so the logs don't appear so flat. I'm doing that with that darker purple mixed with more burnt umber to create a rich purple shade. And some white to create that glow on the sand. I'm not blending all of my brush strokes out that much because I like the painterly look there. Once again, refining some details, there was a log there in the water in the reference image that I really wanted to add in. The yellow ochre gives warmth, more warmth than the burnt umber does. Lastly, I'm adding some more 
detail with a palette knife. It gives it some texture, which I really like. Going back in with the brush, again working back and forth until I get something that I really like. Finally, I'm refining the sky a little bit more, just brightening things up and adjusting them one last time. And adding some more highlights around the water, refining that a little bit more as well. And that's it! The painting is now done and can be signed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was beneficial to you. If it was, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at MapleArtworks to see progress photos and updates. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.